Hey guys, Blake here with another video and I'm really excited to bring this one to you. This kind of kicked off the series that I've ended up doing, you know, half a dozen videos in now and it is my top 10 aquarium items that you can get at Bunnings. Um, so today we're going to bring you 10 more. Um, the last one was really well received, people really enjoyed it and I even saw some people sharing it out on social media which helps a lot. So thanks to those people but uh, yeah, I couldn't wait. So. If you're overseas, Bunnings is a chain hardware store, so think like Lowe's and that sort of thing. Other than that, let's uh, head in, grab a snag, and uh, hit our local big green shed. Let's get into the video. Okay, so I thought just we'd start it off nice and easy. I headed over to the pond area where I found some pond pumps. They come in a variety of sizes and before I built my PVC uh, siphon, I used to use those pumps and some vinyl tubing or even just your local uh, garden hose. And uh, I'd just stick it in the tank, drain it down onto the lawn and it was you know, a really easy way to do water changes. Uh, after a while I did get a bit sick of putting water all over the floor and all those sorts of things. But in a pinch, if you want to drain your aquariums really quickly, the aquarium pump can be the way to go. Also, it's good to ha just have a spare on hand. You never know when a canister will die or a sump pump will die, or you just need to move water around, keep media alive or something like that. So um, it can be really handy to have something that can just push water around until you get a new filter or whatever the situation is. So nice and easy, just uh, aquarium pumps to get started. Number two, I actually have to credit this one to Lyndon from Aquilibrium. Thanks for this idea. I've actually got some around here somewhere, but I won't try and dig them out. And they are these uh, mesh baskets. I think they're used, you know, for skimmer boxes in ponds. So they are in the pond section as well, but they're a perfect size. So you can zip tie some styrofoam to these, get them to float. And they're great for sort of separating fish. If you've got a fish being beaten up, you can put it in there until it recovers. This can also be another great thing to keep on hand because if a disaster happens and the tank starts to leak but the fish aren't compatible, you can separate them within a basket for you know, a short period of time until you can get a new tank up and running. So you never know when these emergencies might happen so it's always good to be prepared. After that I headed out to the garden section and I thought this might be a really interesting one. A lot of you may not even realize that there are actually pond plants there and a lot of them are actually aquatic plants. You can see here on this footage there's plants like Bacopa and Rotala which are you know common plants that we all have in our aquariums or at least I do. So um, if you are in a pinch and you don't mind waiting for the conversion you can get some really cheap large pots of Rotala and Bacopa and there's some other Ludwigia and things that pop up every now and then as well. So keep an eye out on the pond plant section and at the very least you can get some really good floating plants like this uh, water lettuce as long as it's legal in your state it obviously is in Victoria so um, the pond plants can be a nice little uh, gold mine for some aquatic plants. After that we headed inside we went to the pool section and uh, rather than buying the little uh, cardboard boxes of actually these little boxes of aquarium salt which can be quite costly especially when you're talking about that much salt you can buy yourself a huge bag of pool salt and it will generally do the same thing. It's great for sort of an overall uh, cure for a lot of fish diseases, kind of like a broad spectrum thing. Um, even if you get new fish, some people like to just put them in a little bit of salt as they get sort of uh, acclimated into your aquarium environments and, and all that sort of thing. So a lot of people use salt in their aquariums and a cheap way to do it is getting a huge bag of pool salt. I will say though, keep an eye on the bag and I'd steer clear of all these things that contain sort of water clarifiers and other things. Sometimes people use a lot of magnesium and things in their pool salt so just get the most basic one you can get and hopefully it's just going to be 100% salt but I know there definitely is because I've got a bag of it around here somewhere as well. Next one I thought of, I saw this bird netting and I thought as um, so long as you don't get the netting that's too wide it can be a really great aquarium cover. If you don't want to put lids on for whatever reason and um, you just want to make sure that your Saratoga doesn't jump out of the tank or something like that, it could be an idea to cover it over with netting. Or similar if you've got um, a feeding corner but it's a bit big for your killifish and they might jump out, we could put a small little piece of netting or fly screen mesh over that corner and uh, it'll do the job as well. So I guess we can include fly screen in that although I didn't capture any b-roll of that but fly screen and netting is really great to keep your fish in your fish tank where they belong 
worth considering. Next one, we went over to electrical and there's a whole bunch of timers. Uh, Actually, this was a comment from the previous video and I really liked it because I use a heap of these timers and I didn't even think about it. The HPM digital timers in particular are my favorite. You can get a two pack for I think about 30 bucks. I've got a ton of them around here. They're very reliable and I haven't had too many dramas with them, touch wood. But uh, I'd recommend the digital HPM timers for sure and it's a great way to make sure that you don't accidentally leave lights on. But also, you know, it's a great security thing for your house. If you've got a tank that you can sort of see through the window, the lights going on and off can be, you know, uh, worth considering uh, getting a timer for anyway. After that, well, we're looking at the item right here behind me and that is the Racket 1000 Kilo shelves. I do have it here, but I will give you a word of caution. They do bow a little bit, so this here is the six foot by two foot. Couple of things on it. It's not exactly six foot internally, so the six foot goes leg to leg, so it won't fit two three foots in there. And um, it does bow in a little bit, so I'd recommend if you're pretty good with timber just to construct a little center wall here. I'll eventually be doing that in the new place just to sort of make sure that nothing is twisting or um, you know going to crack. The other thing I did just to bolster it up a little bit is I got the MDF shelves and painted them. So I've got the rack and then the MDF on top. I just think that adds a little bit more stability. Then on top of that we have the EVA foam tiles. So um, I, I, I say they're not the best uh, racking out there. I think definitely Dexion are, but in a pinch, um, you can go and pick this up, have it set up and put all your aquariums on it uh, in a day essentially. So um, it is worthwhile considering and the price point is pretty good as well. Um, you can buy the sort of starter kit for pretty cheaply. I guess it's around $200, but for a thousand kilo, quote unquote, um, rack, it's pretty good. I'd definitely prefer it for these sideways tanks because the bowing in the center isn't as big of a drama for those. But um, yeah, I guess it's worth considering and I have them behind me so how could I not say that um, they're a great thing to pick up from Bunnings. Next thing on the list is the clear plastic storage tubs. They're a fantastic little greenhouse for uh, propagating aquatic plants. And as you can see, I'm having quite a bit of success doing that myself. So pretty cheap and I prefer the shallow type ones, but it really doesn't matter. I just prefer to utilize the most um, floor area as I can. Also the more heavy duty tub style ones, I do have some down here as well and they make a great little uh, fish storage area slash pond if you need to just set up a little quarantine area or something like that. And be mindful if you're gonna heat it, obviously make sure that the heat is not in contact with the side. Or you'll end up with a pretty dirty fish room floor. But other than that, um, pretty good idea to utilize these storage tubs. Next one, of course, we couldn't go past bulkheads. Bulkheads are really handy um, to have, especially when I'm gonna be setting up auto water changes and things like that. Um, also, you can just plumb in your in inlet and outflow of your uh, canister filters and things like that. Make it really nice and tidy. Um, and bulkheads are pretty easily accessible from Bunnings, so um, definitely worth picking them up. And I've used a fair few of them myself, so um, yeah. It might also be worth picking up some uh, sealant. I'd like to use Hydro Seal from Bunnings. Uh, it's pretty hard to find sometimes, but I find that it makes the seals just a lot more reliable. So um, it's worthwhile picking that up in conjunction with your bulkheads. The next one is pretty important to have, especially before you actually need it. So I saw these wet dry shop vacs, and even if you just have the small one, you never know when you might need to quickly vacuum up some spilled water or um, another little mess that you've made, especially before your significant other gets home. Uh, I'm guilty of this. I don't have one at the moment, but um, eventually I should get one and uh, it'll just make your clean up a breeze. Sometimes, you know, even just getting that last aqua soil out of your tank that you're trying to clean up and stuff like that can make a really burdensome task a lot easier. So um, yeah, I'll definitely be picking up a shop vac very soon, hopefully before I need it. So um, it's worth considering that as well. And this last one actually was a recommendation as well. Um, this one, they would, didn't have it in stock at the time, unfortunately, so I can only show you the website. It's $20 and it is a drill powered pump. So in those times where you just need to quickly, you know, you don't have time to get a long siphon started or something like that, um, a drill powered pump could be a nice convenient way, especially if you have a lot of nanos and stuff like that, to sort of just go along. It's cordless, so you know, you can just 
yeah, it's just a quick way to pump water out of your tank. I've heard that they're pretty good. I haven't tried them myself, but um, yeah, I've been recommended them, so I thought I'd pass that message on to you. I'm gonna take it as a good sign as well that they're out of stock, meaning that there must be a fair bit of demand for these little things, so hopefully one day we can give it a go and know for sure. Other than that, guys, hopefully you like these 10 more ideas from Bunnings. If you did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. If you got any more ideas, I'd be happy to hear them down below. I loved your comments in the last video. Other than that, have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.